This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Soil Science playlist. This video is looking at soil depth and the different classifications and how we classify the soil in terms of its depth. And that relates to its development, how thick each layer or horizon is going to be within the soil profile. And it can also kind of determine how long the soil has been around and what's which location and climate the soil is found in, and also the amount of organic material and organic activity which is inside the soil based on its fertility and is how it's going to support vegetation. So check out the video. So generally, soil is divided into five depth phases and the phases refer to the stages of development the soil goes through and the deeper the soil generally the more horizons or layers the soil is going to have and the variables that create this soil are going to be persistent for a long time to create this very thick and diverse and multi-horizon soil now soil is between three to five feet deep generally which is 36 inches down to about 60 inches. Now you can get thicker soil and deeper soil, but it depends on the location and journeys between three to five. Again, you can have very thin soil. Again, it comes down to the area and location that you find it in, because each location can be different based on a multitude of variables, such as the soil's characteristics and composition. So we know that there's four main elements to the soil, which is the mineral component, the solid rock component, about 45%. Then you get the 5-10% organic material and humus and organic material with roots. And then you have the pore space, which is filled with either water or air. Now those can vary based on depth and location and those can affect how the soil develops and how long the soil has to develop will control how deep and thick the soil is. Then also you have the gradient, the slope, which is the terrain and the relief of the location the soil is found in. There's a higher gradient, there's more chance of mass movement and movement of water across the surface, not through the soil, with less leaching and percolation, and you'll get less development of, of depth with a higher gradient uh, location. Then you have vegetation. Vegetation links very well also with the organic and animal activity within the soil can create a deeper, more thicker soil closer to that five feet rather than three feet. And that is all linked up with one major thing, climate. The climate is the persistent atmospheric conditions between both temperature, seasons, precipitation. So you have this seasonality aspect of wet and dry season or it's more of a four four season location and you can get this larger development with a four season soil compared to let's say a wet and dry or even a one or two season location depends on latitude and the concentration of radiation from the sun and this would lead to the amount and availability of the water so either groundwater supply moving through the soil through the rock layers to a location to provide the adequate water supply for organic material and biotic component and to create the leaching and percolation of nutrients down to deeper levels in the soil or you have meteoric water which comes from the atmosphere which falls as rain and it's the balance between evaporation and rainfall which would dictate the depth and quality of the soil. Another variable that can come into play with soil depth is the bedrock, the type of rock that is being weathered and broken down to create this parent material in the sea horizon and this would create smaller amounts of rock to fill in and, and add to that mineral component but the breaking down of the bedrock is very important in how fast it can break down which can then build help to build the soil and bind it with the organic material into a deeper thicker and more horizon profile so as part of the five phases of soil depth. We have three right here. We have very shallow, shallow soil, and we have moderate or intermediate soil. So this diagram is shown on the left-hand side 
is the very shallow and, and shallow soil depths, which includes this, these two different profiles. And we have the moderate and intermediate on the right-hand side. Now in the middle, I have an example of depths. So very shallow soil would have obviously from zero inches or zero centimeters down to around 10 inches. That's around 25.4 centimeters. So it's basically less than 10 is very shallow soil. Then we have the shallow, the next level up, the next depth down between 10 to 20 inches. So 25 to 50 centimeters in depth before you get down to the bedrock. That's boundary between the soil and the actual solid rock that is consolidated. It could be sedimentary, igneous or metamorphic. Now you have the intermediate soil which goes down from 20 inches down to 36 or 3 feet which is between 50.8 to 91.4 centimeters in depth again down to the R horizon which is the bedrock. Now the bedrock can continue down for many feet and that just adds into part of the crust and regolith. So you have three distinct soil depths on this diagram. If we turn to the left and see the very shallow depth profile, you'll see that there is a young soil. This soil has just started out in terms of the development, in terms of organizing itself with the parent material, whether an erosion, the deposition of material at the surface, perhaps the start of some basic A horizon with a C horizon and those two are the first kind of horizons to develop and the A is more organic material and the C is more of that broken down parent material which has been eroded and weathered and together they form this very young very basic soil profile and there's very little root development right there and in terms of the R horizon, the boundary, that is where the roots actually stop. The roots can't penetrate into the bedrock because it's consolidated material. It's too thick, too dense. And the roots don't have that, that ability to go through that. You have this two or three basic horizon on this very young soil. Then we have a shallow soil, which is a bit deeper, which would have maybe, maybe an A and C horizon fully formed maybe a tiny inch or two of an O horizon, and that would start to increase some percolation of water, some basic organic and humus development, maybe turn to a B horizon or a very thin, small E horizon, which is for the alluviated material that's been percolated down deeper through gravity using water. And the nutrients would grow from there, so you start to see a more developed soil. Then we have a moderate or intermediate soil, which goes down to three feet before you hit the bedrock. Now this has a greater root development and formation, has certain discrete horizons, which is the O, which is the organic on the surface, the surface horizon. Then we have the A and the C and the B horizons. Now these are further developed through increase of time. You can also say that time is related to these the depth of the soil, the more time in certain conditions with climate as expressed in the previous slide, all those variables, the more time with these variables, the greater chance we have of a deeper, thicker and more fertile soil. And this diagram is showing the deep and very deep soil. So the deep soil is going to be between three feet to about five feet. That's the average. So 36 to 60 inches or 91 to 152 centimeters in depth down to the R horizon boundary. Or you might have a very deep soil, which is rare, which is deeper than five feet. So it's more than 60 inches or 152 centimeters in depth. Now, this deeper, more developed soil comes with lots of time, stability in the variables and climate latitude in terms of the, the terrain and has time to develop. So in terms of tectonics or movement, mass movement, it's going to be very stable environment, leaving the soil with a lot of time to develop. Now, when you have these deeper soils, you have the surface horizon is generally a very thick O horizon. Now, I'm going very general in terms of like a forested area. Deciduous forest, coniferous forest, a place with lots of water, lots of meteoric water, lots of groundwater, lots of pore space and lots of areas for organic material to develop, 
roots, organisms, animals, you name it, can develop and, and live and die. So there's lots of decaying material, there's lots of bacteria, lots of humus, and that makes the soil very thick and very fertile. So a big O horizon, a very, very distinct and discrete A horizon, leading to some leached materials and nutrients to form a nice E horizon, which is lighter in color, with a lot of clay, minerals, and clay elements in, to, in the soil. Then got B and C, which is nice and thick, the, the parent material, lots of weathered, broken down material, and a parent material, some rock. Then we get the nutrients going down deeper into the soil. You get increased stability due to the root development and trees and shrubs and bushes, grass, vegetation, all that's going to stabilize the soil and allow it to grow deeper and form these nice five discrete horizons and a nice deep soil. But it all comes down to the, the interaction of all these variables between climate and rainfall and organisms and organic matter and root development and creating this movement of nutrients down through gravity, through percolation, through leaching to create these distinct layers. And there you have it. So you have these five layers, five depth phases based on time and climate and variables and how all of this can combine into creating fertile soil in different locations around the world. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.